Jose is Irizarry is widely known as the most corrupt DEA agent in the agency's history, which is quite a feat because we've heard some stories about DEA agents getting naughty, getting involved in things they're not supposed to be getting involved in. But Irizarry is now um, claiming over the course of many interviews with the Associated Press that he's actually just one of many corrupt agents who like to party, travel and get wasted on the government's dime. Real good to know that our taxpayer money is going to wonderful causes like this. Now here's what Irizarry has described in his interviews with the Associated Press. Dozens of other federal agents, prosecutors, informants and in some cases cartel smugglers themselves were all in on the three continent joyride known as Team America that chose cities for money laundering pickups, mostly for party purposes or to coincide with Real Madrid soccer or Rafael Nadal tennis matches. That's hilarious. They're, they're, they're hitting up these sporting events. They're using you know government money to do their partying. They're even laundering money on behalf of criminal organizations in an effort to do these sting operations and in some cases losing track of the money that they're laundering. It is insane. So as Irizarry says in the interview, we had free access to do whatever we wanted. We would generate money pickups in places we wanted to go. And once we got there, it was about drinking and girls. Mm. So just a few more details and I'll go to you, Jenk. So the corrupt DEA agents funded their lavish lifestyles through the DEA's own money laundering activities. So every year the DEA launders tens of millions of dollars on behalf of the world's most most violent drug cartels through shell companies, a tactic touted in long running overseas investigations such as Operation Whitewash that resulted in more than 100 arrests and the seizure of more than $100 million and a ton of cocaine. Now, the DEA has also faced criticism for allowing huge amounts of money in the operation to go unseized, enabling cartels to continue plying their trade and for failing to tightly monitor and track the stings, making it difficult to evaluate results. And what's really interesting about this story is that Irizarry is salty about the fact that he's the one who's been, you know, targeted for these investigations and he's the one who's referred to as the most corrupt DEA agent. And so now he's like, I'm about to tell all because I was surrounded by a bunch of these goons who did the same thing and they're not getting called out. And prosecutors actually agree with him on that. Cenk. To which I say, of course. So power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely and money corrupts. So we have a um, toxic combination here. So uh, DEA seizes money in legitimate and illegitimate ways. Uh, for example, they do seizures uh, and, and asset forfeitures uh, on the spot. So like if they uh, bust you on something they th say you did, even if you didn't do it, they could seize the car that you're in, the boat that you're on. Uh, they've seized houses before, etc. And 95% of the time, you cannot get that stuff back. Right. Okay. Even if you didn't do it, so they they started gorging on basically legalized robbery, and so um, so then we're surprised to find out that DEA has tons of robbers in it. <laughs> but we taught them to be robbers. 100%. Right? And then they're doing the whitewash operation. Now that one is legitimate because I know you have to sometimes participate in it to get the evidence. So they're doing the money laundering, they collect evidence and then they do 100 arrests, right? But in the meanwhile, you still have people that are participating in this. And again, they're getting more steeped in the culture of robbery, right? And so then they start just taking the money and then doing these illicit things with them. You should have a lot of guardrails there. You should be super mm -hmm. careful about how you conduct operations like that so that the people involved don't get corrupted. Well, they didn't have those and they got massively corrupted. Now, prosecutors say that Irizarry has embezzled as much as $9 million, which is freaking insane from these money laundering schemes. Um, and he was chosen by the DEA to handle sensitive financial transactions even after he had filed for bankruptcy. Which like speaking of guardrails, right? 
Mm, don't just file for bankruptcy. I'm not saying that everyone who files for bankruptcy is gonna engage in criminality or anything like that. But I mean- But he does need the money. He needs the money and there's all these financial pressures. So mm, maybe just do a little bit of oversight. Just a little bit of oversight. And guys, a lot of times you can just see it with the plan. Like when they show up with the fancy cars yeah, and the guys declaring bankruptcy, yeah. so you go- Oh boy, is like uh -huh. flashy and everything. Right. Like super flashy, and, okay. Anyway, eventually he was brought down by another informant who confessed to misappropriating funds. Um, and he ended up pleading guilty to 19 counts of corruption and will shortly begin a 12 year federal prison sentence. So there are consequences. And again, he's facing the consequences. He's super salty that all of his former colleagues are not currently facing the consequences, which is why he's calling um, for them to be looked into as well. He explained that the reason that he and other DEA agents weren't doing their jobs was because many of them actually believe that their efforts are worthless, that the drug war is unwinnable. Yeah, he's, can I just say, I'm gonna interrupt for a second, uh -huh. just to say that's the most true thing I've ever heard. Yeah, it is, it and, is. And and I, you see that time and time again, not just in corruption cases, but uh, DEA just local cops going, well, I might as well take the money because it's we're not gonna win this war anyway. This whole thing is BS. This everything is a lie, right? They some of them. My point is that some of them start out honest, get frustrated, and they're like, well, I might as well just take it, right? Yeah. Let me give you his exact quote. So this is what he told uh, the Associated Press: "Quote, you can't win an unwinnable war." DEA knows this and the agents know this. There's so much dope leaving Colombia and there's so much money. We know we're not making a difference. The drug war is a game. It was a very fun game that we were playing. So can we stop like paying this agency with our tax money? I mean, there's so much that we need in this country for ordinary Americans, the idea of just dumping all of our, like not all, but a huge portion of our resources into a government agency that doesn't even believe in the mission that they're they're engaged in, not a good feeling. Yeah, and, and we have to break it down into a couple of different parts, right? So for a long time, a huge part of the war on drugs was marijuana. And it still is, because remember, it's still illegal nationwide. Different states have legalized it, but not all states. And at the federal level, it's still a schedule one drug saying that it's the most dangerous drug. So anyone involved in the war on drugs when it comes to marijuana, obviously is wasting their time and and that should be disbanded immediately. On the other hand, there are very hard drugs that are very dangerous like fentanyl. But then for those drugs, the correct answer is not throw a bunch of agents at it, have them take the money and then hope that they return it and lead to this kind of crazy criminality. The answer is to address it on the demand side rather than the supply side. I'm not saying you don't do any blocking of, of drugs. Yes, give that your best chance, I guess, right? Trying to stop it at the border, etc. But you really have to have an excellent program to make sure that people are not taking it here. Because as long as there's demand, and everyone that knows markets knows this, as long as there's demand, there's gonna be supply. Yeah, the question is why is there so much demand? And look, I think that like some drugs, I, I don't even think are a big deal, like marijuana, right? I don't want kids doing marijuana, but overall, uh, it is a relatively harmless drug. When it comes to the harmful drugs, like the you know fentanyl epidemic that we're dealing with right now, the question is why is there so much demand? And it's escapism, it's people not having their material you know, uh, needs met, all of those things. I think dealing with those issues is much more important than having a government agency waste all of our resources on something they don't even believe.